What's up guys? Welcome back to the Combat Sports Media YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Leo Santa Cruz versus Keenan Carbajal fight that took place this past Saturday uh, at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas on the undercard of, well, it was a co-main event to the Thurman versus Barrios fight. And um, I'm also going to get into Leo Santa Cruz's career and what I think of it uh, thus far. And before I go any further, please like and subscribe, especially if you haven't done so and you enjoy my content. Uh, so let's get started. Leo Santa Cruz versus Keenan Carbajal. Uh, well, the first thing that I noticed about this fight was the size difference when they were in the ring together. Uh, Keenan Carbajal was actually naturally the biggest fighter on the entire card, on, on the entire televised card, despite the fact that, you know, uh, the main event was two welterweights and the uh, and he was a featherweight or a super featherweight rather uh, in this fight. Uh, the guy is like 5'11", 5'10", in height, uh, broad shoulders, uh, definitely looks like he could be fighting at 147 or at 154 easily. Uh, however, obviously he's not the most dynamic or gifted fighter. I think which is part of the reason why he has dedicated himself into cutting massive amounts of weight so he could at least have a big size advantage over everybody else that he fights. Um, because let me tell you, being 5'10 at featherweight is almost unheard of. Uh, that's fucking massive for 126 and at 130, which is where he fights. Um, like I said, he could easily be a welterweight. But the problem is he'd probably get his ass whooped that well to wait because he's just simply not that good. Now, he's not a bum, but he's got he, he's very limited. He doesn't have much of a right hand. Uh, Keenan Carbajal does not have much of a right hand. And he uh, it, it, during the fight, it was very obvious and apparent that <clears throat> he either went into the fight with lingering in, injuries uh, that got worse while he was fighting or he just suffered bad injuries uh in the actual fight because uh he is a left hand dominant fighter he was using the jab earlier on pretty well and throughout the whole fight what uh keenan carbohol i gotta give him credit what he does have is a nice double left hook to the body and head um and he was using that pretty good all night um, and so you could tell that's kind of his, that's probably his bread and butter. But after a few rounds, he suffered injuries in his left arm, whether it was his hand or whatnot or his shoulder, and he couldn't, uh, be consistent with the jab. And that was actually the most important punch for him in this fight was his jab. Um, Ken, Kenan Carmohol has a lot of heart, uh, like I said, he's not a bum. Uh, he's just limited. Um, he showed plenty of heart. He does have a good uh, left hook, a decent jab, but again, very left hand dominant. Um, and and um, he's just not dynamic. He's not a dynamic fighter at all. And what happened was Leo Santa Cruz basically outworked him uh, despite being half his size from the first round to the 10th round, just outworked him. That's all he did. Uh, he, he was coming forward the whole night behind the jab and throwing combinations all night long. That's what Leo Santa Cruz was doing. He weaponized his aerobic capacity, much like he always does in all of his fights, except for maybe the second Carl Frampton fight in which he used a lot of boxing skill as well. But, you know, this was an old school Leo Santa Cruz performance. This was a vintage Leo Santa Cruz performance in the sense that it was all about overwhelming his opponent with combinations and uh, activity um, via his aerobic capacity. Um, but he wasn't able to get Keenan out of there because Keenan is tough and he's fucking huge. Like I said, the biggest fighter on the card. He's bigger than Keith. He's naturally bigger than Keith Thurman. He's naturally bigger or about the same size is bigger than Mario Barrios. You know what I mean? 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if Keenan walks around at 170, you know? Um, but <clears throat> anyway, that's what it was, a vintage Leo Santa Cruz performance. And um, going on to what the future may hold regarding both fighters, I'm assuming Keenan is probably gonna go back to fighting on a club show or two, or maybe even on a, a PBC untelevised undercard, and then he'll probably be brought back again uh, on a Fox <coughs> co-main event as an opponent or something or other. <clears throat> um, but with Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz is probably, you know, who the fuck knows? I mean, like, like seriously, like, who the fuck knows? That's my, that's what all I gotta say about that. Um, and regarding what I think of Leo Santa Cruz's career thus far, is um, in many ways a disappointment, to be honest, because, okay, check this out. 10 years ago, when the 2000 or around the time when the 2012 Olympics happened and you know that class was turning pro in the featherweight super featherweight picture you had guys like Oscar Valdez emerging Joseph Diaz came out of those Olympics as well representing America or in the USA I should say um, you had Abner Mares you had, uh, you know, Leo Santa Cruz himself, even though obviously he wasn't an amateur standout, but you, you know, the point is you had all these West Coast or California based Mexican Americans that for the most part were all amateur standouts that were turning pro at the same exact time. Uh, you also, on top of all that, had guys like Gary Russell and, and stuff like that. And I think it's a travesty and a tragedy uh, and, 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 and shame on the promoters, whether it's Golden Boy, Al Heyman, PBC, what, whatever. I, I don't even know who the fuck to blame, but who, it doesn't matter. You know, all of them. We're going to blame all of them in this video. Top Rank, Golden Boy, PBC, Al Heyman, all you motherfuckers, all right? You dropped the ball on this. Why didn't uh, 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 Abner Mares and Oscar Valdez fight? Why didn't Oscar Valdez and Leo Santa Cruz fight? Why didn't... You, you had all these Mexican Americans that were turning pro at the same time at the same weight. You know, Joseph Diaz, Ella, uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Why did that? Why didn't that happen? These were all fights that could have turned into trilogies and brand building uh, uh, events uh, for all the fighters involved. Uh, again, Oscar Valdez versus Leo Santa Cruz could have filled the Staples Center three fucking times together, you know, throughout their careers. And and it, it could have been like another Barrera Morales kind of thing. You know, Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Mar, uh, uh, Abner Mars is the only one that Leo Santa Cruz fought out of all those guys, you know. Um, it's a shame, you know, and, and, and that was the lamest matchup out of all of them. Uh, no one even wanted to see the second Abner Mars fight. Uh, you know, LSC should have fought Oscar Valdez in the trilogy, maybe. He should have fought Joseph Diaz. Yeah, he would have probably taken L's, but guess what? He would have been remembered forever, and he would have uh, uh, been a part of Mexican uh, boxing greatness because he would have been part of uh, great trilogies or and whatnot. And, and, you know, see, great fighters need each other. Duran, Leonard, uh, uh, Hearns. Hagler, they're remembered because they fought each other. And, and you know, uh, fighters need dance partners. 
and, and all these guys, at least most of them being Mexican and Mexican American, it's just a shame that those fights never happened pertaining to Leo Santa Cruz. And I'm just talking about those guys. Forget about him fighting, not fighting uh, Lomachenko, not fighting Rigindal, uh, uh, not fighting um, uh, uh, Scott Quigg, you know? I can go on and on, but shit, dude, what, at least, you know, why didn't you fight Joseph Diaz at the Staples Center three fucking times? Uh, uh, or, or at the MGM Grand three fucking times in a trilogy, in a Mexican-American trilogy, uh, a fucking LA Mexican trilogy. Why not? Why didn't you fucking do that? These promoters really dropped the fucking ball on that generation of Mexican-American featherweights. They could have all been legends together uh, and helped one another build uh, uh, massive careers and forever be in boxing history. But instead, they went on to have especially Leo Santa Cruz, a forgettable, lame-ass career uh, that did nothing more than just fill up his trophy cabinet full of belts that no one gives a fuck about, all right? That's, that's what it is. Um, that's what I make of his career, a fucking joke. That's what his career has been, a joke. God knows how many fights this guy has professionally, but in reality, Leo Santa Cruz only has like two real fights to his name. That's, uh, uh, or three rather. That's the first Abner Morris fight, which was a real fight. And then the, the two Carl Frampton fights, which were real fights. So this guy has only had three fucking real fights in his career this far. And we're already fucking like, he's about to retire in a year or two. So it's just been a waste of time and a joke. Peace out. God bless all of you. Thank you for watching. We got more uh, content coming up very soon. So check back and um, I'll see you guys soon.